Good morning, everybody. Just want to remind you just quickly to put your electronic devices on silent mode um, for this uh, celebration of Bill's life. My name is Bob Cohen, and I want to welcome you all here to, to really to this celebration. This is to celebrate Bill's life. And Bill was really the closest thing in the world uh, to me, uh, the closest thing to a brother to me in the whole world. He did tell me a few days before he died that he considered me his big brother. I guess that's because I'm a year older. But during the 33 years that I knew him, he became my closest friend. He was my best man and was closer than any brother that I could have ever had. And I'm going to miss him very, very deeply. He was an amazing person in so many ways that you will hear from his friends, from his family, from his colleagues, and from his comrades, uh, who are all going to speak here today. At every single stage of Bill's life, when he met people, when they came into his life, he developed friends, and these friends were his friends forever. He had that talent. I was really one of the lucky ones, though, because I got to meet Bill when I was young. I was just 19 at the time, and Bill was 18. Back in 1977, and back just a few blocks uh, to the west of here, at a, a place called Willard Hall on Sherman Avenue and University Place, and a corridor known as Lost Horizons. Um, there are many other Willard people here from those days, the Willard Wonkas, and you're going to get a chance to hear from them as well. Um, but it's really fitting that we're here at the Alice Villar Chapel of Northwestern, just a few blocks from where Bill first lived when he came to this beautiful city and this beautiful town. It seems that as soon as I met Bill, we became fast friends, as was his way. Um, which also entailed debating and arguing and discussing lots of topics and, of course, what we felt were the most profound ideas and thoughts of the day. And for us, and for me and Bill, it was the discussion of whether or not he should drink alcohol. Sandy, his sister, who will speak in a few minutes, will tell you that he wrote an essay in high school saying that he would never, ever touch a drop of alcohol. Um, and actually, um, as soon as I met him, I took this as a challenge. I figured this was my job to convince Bill to drink and um, especially since it was such an important part of our life in the Willard uh, community. And, um, and I did not want him to miss out on this or do a disservice to himself by missing this extremely important part of college life. However, um, even though Bill did ultimately have a few beers while he was in college, he was not a partier, Aaron, Nolan, and Kyle. I want you to know that. And, um, but he was a very moderate and a, a wonderful guy in that respect. I think that uh, later on our debates and struggles actually did become more profound and more important, I guess, and uh, th over the next few years I found myself struggling with Bill uh, to consider using his many talents to build relationships, uh, to become a revolutionary, and try to change the world for, to make it a better place. And others that are here today, Carol Carath, um, Winston Rose, and Daryl Irby will, will talk to you a little bit more about Bill's struggles to try and fight the world, to make the world a more egalitarian and just society. While I was in medical school, Bill and I roomed together one summer in a, an apartment in a raggedy old frame, wooden, wood frame building on Halstead and Diversity Streets and smelled of cat urine. And we had a tiny little air conditioner that cooled a two foot by three foot square spot on the couch, which Bill and I constantly fought over who would get to sit there. And of course, we continued our debates about life and the meaning of life. And one of our debates at that time is, who should we marry? What kind of woman would we want to marry? We decided that we wanted to marry a, a gorgeous revolutionary woman. That was our conclusion after many, many hours of debate. It may seem obvious to you today, but that's what we decided. Bill found his gorgeous revolutionary woman in Maureen. I played a little part in that by introducing uh, uh, Bill to Maureen. I met her in the surgical dispensary of Cook County Hospital as we both sewed up the face of a very unfortunate individual who had the luck to have me as a medical student and her as an intern rotating through plastic surgery uh, at the time. And he's probably still walking around today with the remnants of our labors uh, on his face. Over the years, through thick and thin, Bill and I remained friends. We never lost touch. Starting in 2001, we began our journey through what I would call a beautiful 10-year midlife crisis. It was joined by George Gutierrez, who is uh, our, one of his fellow math teachers whom I met through Bill, and became the third one of our little city slickers group. You might know the movie with Billy Crystal, three guys in midlife crisis, a Jewish guy, a tall white guy, and a Mexican guy. So that was Bill, George, and myself. <laughs> And we tried to emulate them in our comedic endeavors as well as what we were doing. 
So we rode 500 miles from Minneapolis to Chicago, starting at the home of his dear friend Jim Jacobson, and then arriving in Chicago, we did another 500 mile ride the next summer from all across the beautiful state of Iowa through the odoriferous pig uh, farms and many other places. We did two Chicago marathons, one of which we were joined by Bill's other dear friend, uh, Johnny, and we all four, Bill, George, Johnny and I, crossed the finish line of the Chicago Marathon in 2002, arms clasped together. Johnny had to wait for us because we were a little bit slower, but he did. He didn't care about his time or qualifying for Boston, he waited for us. In 2004, Bill became ill and was diagnosed with a gastrointestinal stromal tumor, but he took it head on. Two months after his surgery, we were riding our bikes up the mountains of Spain, ready to feast on what we were told in the brochures that we read about this tour was the famous Segovian lamb, roasted Segovian lamb, which turned out to be almost half of the entire animal. Bill ran the marathon in 2005 after this first surgery, and in 2006, when his tumor recurred, Bill had a second surgery, but definitely he was determined to continue fighting. And after that surgery, when he recovered enough, we rode our bikes in Amsterdam. In 2008, the tumor recurred and had spread to the point that it could not be removed. This didn't stop Bill. He took his chemo, and when that failed, he searched and found new medicines. He participated in trials that would help him as well as others suffering from GIST. And through the past summer, even up till this past summer, he was able to live a rich and full life. Towards the end, Bill's, one of main, Bill's main concerns was the welfare of his wife Maureen and his three wonderful sons, Nolan, Aaron, and Kyle. But I know that um, every single one of us here uh, have made them part of our families. They will never want for anything because they have so many dear, wonderful friends, family, comrades, everybody around the world will, that will always be there for them. So I would just like to say I'll dearly miss Bill, who clearly for me was the brother from another mother. And um, right now, I think that uh, Maureen, Aaron, Nolan, and Kyle are going to come up and say a few words. Thank you.